Done. Okay, let's go. Tzadik Gimel Amid Beis and Sanhedrin. Um, what are we selling over here? Okay, we're at two. Baby. Okay, in the wide lines at the bottom of the page, when the fourth line of the wide lines. Okay, the Gemara is speaking about Hanani Mishal Vazaria, the way the. Um, well, first the Gemara is speaking about Bar Koychva. The Gemara, the, the Chum thought, the Bekiva thought he was Mashiach, and then he got killed in Machlekes. In our Gemara says that the Chum killed him, and other places says the Romans killed him. The bottom line, he wasn't Mashiach. Then the Gemara says like this, Daniel Hanan Mishav Rezaria were given the six blessings. Remember, we learned before, this is what the Gemara is in the middle of. It says over here in the Gemara before that what does it mean by Rus Sheikh Sa'irim? That all her descendants were given six brachas. So it went first into Davin Amelech, and then it says, uh, then going into the Hanani Mishal Vazariah, and so on. Okay, so it said, you know what, let's go a little bit earlier. Maya Shir Mum, the first of the wide lines. Okay, that's where we're going to start. So it says, Maya Donil Hanani Mishal Vazaria Dechsibu, it says, Asher Ein Bam Komum, they had no blemish in them, simply means a physical blemish. By the way, in the Shatenstein, it's 93b2 at the end of the thing. What Sir Gmaria says, uh, oh, so the Patsik says like this, they have no mum, Tevin uh, Mara, they looked, they were very handsome, Umaskilim Bechol Chachma, they were skillful in all wisdom. V'yei they das, and they had uh, discrimination in knowledge, umavina mada, and their perspective in learning. So this is what the Pasuk speaks about, Daniel, Hanani, Mishov, Azari, and Daniel. So the Gemara says, and then it says, They had the ability to stand, this is what the Pasuk says, in the, pal- in the palace of the king, to teach them the script, in the Lashin of the people from Kazdim. So this is what the Pasuk describes about the Hanani, Mishav, Azari, and Daniel. The Kazdim. The There's a nation there. He taught them that in their language. So the Pasuk says he had no blemish. So the Gemara says, we learned, again, we learned this last time. We just started, because we can't start in the middle. So the Gemara says, My Asher Abraham Komum. What does it mean they had no blemishes? They're so perfect human beings that no blemishes? It means no physical blemishes. Even the puncture of wood uh, bloodletting. Years ago, <clears throat> they used to do bloodletting. So they used to puncture the skin to take blood out. They didn't even have a, a puncture of bloodletting. Why? Because they were never sick. So they never, that's what it means. They didn't have any blemish, not even a, a puncture of a needle hole. And then it says, "My What does the pasuk mean? They had the ability to stand in the presence of the king. Again, then the royal presence. They didn't have any laughter. They didn't have any conversation, and they didn't sleep. They didn't fall asleep in the presence of the king. Not only that, if they had to go to the bathroom. They held themselves in. Why was all this? Because they had fear of the king, fear and awe of the king. This is where we start. I know, this is where we start. So then the Pasik says, Yehuda, they were the children of Yehuda, Okay? So the Pasik says, amongst them from the Yidden of Yehuda, means Shevet Yehuda, with Daniel Hanani Mishal Vazari, which implies simply they all came from Shevet Yehuda, <coughs> which makes sense why they were blessed <coughs> with the six brachas because Rus, all the descendants, David and Melech, right, was blessed with six brachas. Therefore, they were also blessed with six brachas because they also came from Shevet Yehuda. So, Amen Abelazar, Kulamim Yehudahim. 
All of them, the Daniel, Hanani, Mishal, Azaria, all came from Shevet Yehuda. But the Shmuel Ben Nachmani Omar, Daniel, Mibnei Yehuda. Is that true? He says Daniel came from Shevet Yehuda, but Hanani, Mishal, Azaria, who came from different Shvatim, they did not come from uh, the tribe of Yehuda. <coughs> So therefore, the Pasik, I, the Pasik says, these are the descendants of Yehuda, Daniel, Hanan, Mishav, Azaria. So he said, it means like this, yeah? Daniel, Taka, came from the Yehuda. And then there was also Hanani, Mishav, Azaria, but they weren't part of Shevet Yehuda. And then it says, another Pasik about Daniel, Hanani, Mishav, Azaria, it says like this, Umebanecha, Sheyetzim, Imcham, from your sons that will issue from you, Yikochu, they will uh, bear, the children you will bear, they will take, they will be taken, and there would be, uh, literally the English word is annex, in the office of the king. Those now, one second. So, my sorisim, the Lord said, what does this word sorisim mean? Rabbi Yomer sorisim mamish. They're mamish. They're both. Yeah, they cut them off. They, they sterilize them. I'll tell you, say in a second. Rabchanina ben Amar, Rabchanina says, no, he can't say that they were out, that Daniel, Hanan, Mishav, Azariah were all uh, sterilized. That means that Shinistra, Avedis, Zabi, Mem. Meaning, idolatry was cut up, sterilized in their days. Meaning, in their days, they got rid of uh, idolatry. Mephoshim say, that in these big kings, their loyal servants, they castrated, they, they sterilized them. Why? They didn't want them to have a wife and kids, because then they would be busy with them instead of being devoted to the king. They the king... In the huh? They in the yeah, yeah, they, they were afraid of everything. <clears throat> but the Russian said the real reason was they didn't want them having a family with kids that they should be busy with. So they castrated them, and then they would be devoted 24-7 to the king himself. But one opinion says you're attacking castrated. Another opinion says, no, what it means is they were perfect. What it means is they weren't, they were, I, Ave de Zoda was killed in their days, castrated, so to speak, in their days. So the Mai says, one minute. It makes sense. According to the opinion, it says Ave de Zoda was castrated in its days. That's what it says. Therefore, it's written, no wound was upon them. Meaning, what, is, what did we say before? They had no blemishes. There's no bigger blemish than castration. So, so it says like this. If you say that it means Saris and not they were castrated, that they Avedazaras ex- ceased to exist in their days, now you can understand why they had no blemishes, because they were perfect. But if you're going to say they were sterilized, castrated, so he says, Be good. There's, no, there's no bigger blemish than being castrated. How could the Pasuk say they had no uh, blemishes? So Igmar says, you're right, they had blemishes. When the Pasuk says there were no blemishes, it means no blemishes caused by fire. What was the word? They were thrown into the fire. Afterwards, the Pasuk says there was no blemish in them. So he, that opinion says, what does it mean no blemish? They, had a, they were castrated according to that opinion. Aye, there was no blemish, no blemish from the fire. But they had other blemish that they were castrated. So the Gemara says, But it already says the smoke of the fire not seeped into them. There's another Pasuk that says they weren't affected by the fire. So what does it mean, again, the Pasuk saying there was no blemish? Obviously, it means a different blemish. No, so it says like, Chachlo v'leirecha. There was no blemish, and there was not even, they didn't even smell from fire. You know, God forbid somebody singed from fire, they can smell for the rest of their life from fire. So it says, what it means is, there was no blemish. One Pasuk says they were not affected by the fire, and they didn't even smell from the fire. Okay, now the Gemara says like this. Bishlam Maman Diyama Shinistra Vedazari Bimeyam. Again, one opinion says they were castrated. The other opinion says, no, 
Avedu Zohar is castrated, meaning it ceased to exist. So the Gemara said, Bishleim al Mandi Amashinista Avedu Zohar be mayhem. It makes sense according to the opinion that says Avedu Zohar was stopped in their days. That's what it says. Kayamar Hashem, this is the Haftada that we say on the fast day at Mincham. La Sarisim to the Sarisim. Asha Yishma Shapsaisai, the annex who will keep my Shabbos. Okay. Ella man the Amisri Simamish Mishtoi Krabi Gnutsa that see the guy with the in other words like this. That this is going back to Chiskiya Melov, by the way. Okay? So he says like this. Rabchanina is that there is no nothing uh, derogatory said about them, okay? Because they got rid of Aveda Zara. Now in the earlier days, it says like this: Kayamar Hashem, so Hashem said, La Sarisim, Ashe Yishmu Shabsaisai, the Sarisim that kept my Shabbos. Now, if it refers to getting rid of Avedah Zara, then the Torah is speaking something positive about them. La Sarisim to the guys that got rid of Avedah Zara who kept my Shabbos. Ella, but if you're going to say Sarisim Mamish. If you're going to say the Torah calls them sorisim, that they were castrated, so the Torah is speaking this bad about Hanani Mishal Vazari. The Torah is speaking, the people that were castrated kept my Shabbos. It's not a positive thing to speak about Hanani Mishal Vazari. So then why would the Torah use that degrading expression? So therefore we, it seems that the correct in, uh, meaning of it is that they stopped of a disorder. Then the Pasuk says, la sorisim, to those people who stopped the Vedas who kept my Shabbos, so then you're speaking positive. But they never started to stop the Vedas In their days, he stopped the Vedas From the Yidden. Oh, from, the the Yidden. Are, from the Yidden. From the Yidden. The Yidden stopped the worshipping the Vedas Not the Daniel. No. no. So the Gemara says, no. Hava hob, hava buhu. Okay? In other words, so the, now the Gemara answers, both interpretations are true. <laughs> They were castrated, and Avedas are stopped in their days. So when the Pasuk calls them Sarisim, it's not totally negative, because the term means also the fact that they stopped Avedas are in their days. So now the Gemara says like this. Bishlam, now the Gemara is going in the reverse. The Gemara is going to say, now it makes more sense to say they were castrated. So Bishlam, Laman, the Amar, Sarisim, Mamish, it, it makes sense if you say they were mamish castrated. That's why it says, "But base you say yod I will give them within my house a walls of a mam- monument, memorial better than sons and daughters." Okay, the what did the people say about the sedisim? By the way, that's why it's called yad v'shem. You know, the Holocaust memorials are called yad v'shem. It's because it is pasuk. But yad v'shem means. Hashem will give him a, a monument and a memorial. So Yad Vashem is actually a Pasuk in Yeshaya that we say in the Haftarah on the fast day in Mincha. It's a Yad Vashem means Hashem says, I'm going to give them a memorial better than sons and daughters. Yad is hand. Yeah, no, here it means Yad Vashem doesn't mean hand. It means um, basically my house, my walls, Yad Vashem is a monument and memorial. Literally means a hand and a name, okay? No, but here it says, it actually means um, those are people that don't have children, Hashem will take care of them in their old age. It basically means a memorial for them. So, so he says like this, now it makes sense, meaning, what is the Pusik saying about them? Hashem says, I'm going to give them a memorial better than sons and daughters. So now like this. If they were castrated, they didn't have any kids. So now it makes sense what the Pasuk says, I'm going to make a memorial better than sons and daughters. But if they had kids, so what does it mean a memorial better than sons and daughters? They had sons and daughters. But if you say the second opinion says they got rid of Avedizada, so my take me bottom of bonus, they had kids. So why is Hashem saying, I'm going to make a memorial for you better than kids? They had kids. 
So Gemara says, no, the Gemara is going to answer, they had kids, but the kids died. So the pearl, now they didn't have any kids. If they didn't have any kids, Hashem says, I'm going to make a memorial better than kids. They all had kids who died already. Okay. They were castrated and they had kids that died. Correct. No. First they had kids. First they had kids. And then the Nebuchadnezzar took them into the pile and then he castrated them. So the Mari says, it's interesting. One opinion the Mari just learned says they were both. Avedas are stopped in the days and they're castrated. Or you say they were castrated. But the bottom line is these guys suffered a lot. No, they're not. The Nia was. But see, the Gemara is going to talk about that soon. Remember we learned the Nia was greater than them because the Nia was a Navi and they were not. So what were they saying? What? They were great Sadiqim. Not compared to the Nia, by the way. The Altrebbe brings down in Tanya from the Zayar. You know, Daniel and the lions, then everybody knows the story. Then they, okay. Nebuchadnezzar, he didn't throw him into the fire, he threw him into the lions then. Yeah? And he starved the lions, the whole story, yeah? And then the, the story of Daniel is he threw him into the lions then, and Daniel, nothing happened to him, which is again a miracle. Desire says it wasn't such, the Rebbe says in Tanya, it wasn't such a great miracle. A person is born with Salam Aluki. A person bought the image of God on his forehead. And therefore, Hashem says, Your fear and all will be on all animals of the world. Which means, a Yid who has the Tzalem Malaki, if he's a Tzadik, the Tzalem Malaki is on his face. Therefore, when an animal sees him, the Pasuk says, the fear of you will be on all animals. Why? Because the animal now sees it, the animal sees the Tzalem Malaki. And they're afraid. If you're not a tzaddik, then all the animals, so there's no tzalem on your forehead. So all the animal sees is another animal, so he, a two-legged animal, so he devours you. So the Pearl Desire says, why didn't Daniel get killed in the lions? It wasn't a miracle. Daniel was a tzaddik. He had a tzalem on his face, so the animals were afraid. It's a natural thing. Also what's natural is you don't show fear. Ah, uh, okay, but... A lion that starved a lion that starved three days is gonna go for it. I told you about uh, your guys. Martha and Esther, the Me'idi writes the Me'idi writes with Rishan that they're buried in Ashish Saul, not in Iran. Anyway, there's also an interest very famous story with the Arachaim Kardish. He lived in the time of the Baal Shem Tev. The Arachayim HaKadosh, you know the one that wrote uh, commentary in Chumash? You know how he wrote the commentary in Chumash? <laughs> he only had daughters, no sons, like Rashi. He only had daughters, no sons. And he used to learn Chumash with his daughters. And when learning Chumash with his daughter, he, came, he made up the commentary of the Arachayim on, on Chumash. The Arachayim HaKadosh. Anyway, the story is told he was once going on a, on a trip with a caravan. And he made up with the caravan Khatkhila, they have to rest in Shabbos. That's it, no traveling in Shabbos. Dor Chaim HaKadosh. The Pearl, okay, they made up. Anyway, the Pearl, they fell behind schedule, and the, the head of the caravan said, we're going in Shabbos. Dor Chaim said, you made up. It was the middle of a desert. He said, you made up, we're stopping. He said, well, behind schedule, we're going. Everybody went, Dor Chaim didn't go. So Dor Chaim stayed alone, or the forest, or a desert, wherever it was, in a dangerous place. But he said, I'm not going on Shabbos. Soon, a lion came. And so the way the story goes, Arachayim showed him his bris. He showed him his bris, and that he never omitted zera, never wasted seed, and other words, a holy tzaddik. And the lion crouched down, protected him the whole Shabbos. And after Shabbos, the lion crouched down, and like, get on my back. And he got on his back and he caught up very soon to the rest of the, the caravan. But there is a Tzalem Malaki that a person has. That's what Daniel had. Daniel had. Okay, so now the Gemara says, My shame olim etein lei ashelo yikareis. 
Then the Pasik says, an everlasting name I will give him and he'll never be cut off. So the Gemara says, what is that Pasik for? Who's going to have an eternal uh, name? I'm going to have to ask back up part of it, see pretty, back up part of the Darshan and see pretty. That's Sefer Daniel Shinik Al Shmei. It's the book, it refers to the Sefer Daniel that's called on Daniel's name. So the Gemara says, Bichti. Now, call Mili the Ezra. Now, okay, there's Daniel, there's Ezra, right? Now, the Sefer is called Ezra. The truth is, half of Ezra, call Mili the Ezra, the Chami Ben Chachlal Yaim Amrinen. The half the book of Ezra, a lot of it Nechamia said. Ezra and Nechamia were, you know, built the second base of English. And Nechamia ben Chachlamai Tamali Ikri Sefer Al Shmei. He said, Why isn't there a Sefer called Nechamia? The Sefer called Ezra. A good part of Ezra was said by Nechamia. So why isn't there a Sefer, Nechamia? So my answer is, Amen Abiyamia by Abba, Mine Shehech Sik Tevelatzmi. He took personal credit for his achievements. And because of that, he didn't merit to have a Sefer. The same that Rebbe explained many times, at the Sefer Esther. Yeah, Esther, that we read and put him. Is that called Esther Mordechai? There's no Sefer Mordechai. Mordechai was a great guy. There's only Sefer Esther. Because, so the Gemara says, why was it called Esther? Because Esther came to the Chachamim of her generation and said, Kisvuni Lodaitis. Write me for all generations. Write a book on my name. And the Chachamim gave in to her. She pressured them and they gave in. Therefore, there's a safe for Esther. But she married and Mordechai didn't. That's contrary to That's what happened by the Chamia. That's exactly what happened by the Chamia. No, she wasn't writing for Kavod. Esther did it, should be a, a yomte forever. Should be a yomte forever. Because Esther did it. The power of the woman. Hey, who convinces men or women? Hello? Come on, it's all men share. Who convinces men or women? Men are not convincing, women. Uh, even he'll agree. Huh? Okay, the bottom line. So he says, how do we, so therefore the safe, but it's, listen to this. Why isn't the safe, why isn't there a safe called Nehemiah? Not because he wasn't a great man. Because he could, took personal credit for what he did. Shenama because of sags. Zachali alekalu teva. Remember me, Hashem, for good. Meaning, uh, basically, what happened over here like this. He brings out the bottom. Nehemiah was appointed by the Persian king as governor of a new return colony in Yerushalayim, which is desperate straits. As governor, Nehemiah undertook a needed reforms, building a role around the city, fighting against intermarriage, habit desecration, social injustice. You know, we learned this in Allah, the, the, all the din of Mamuksa, you know, things of Muksa and Shabbos. Nehemiah instituted Muksa, by the way. Because people in his time, not that brings this out, I mean, it's brought down all over the place, but Nehemiah, in his, the days of Nehemiah, like he says, he fought intermarriage, he fought desecration of Shabbos, he had to fight all those things. In days in the Chemia, people were very loose in Shabbos. So he instituted Muksa, by the way, original Muksa. Everything is Muksa except food utensils and food. Everything and book. It's Svarim. Everything else is Muksa. Everything. And then people started keeping Shabbos more. So he lessened it. He loosened it. But, no, he, the, the Persian king appointed him the governor of the Jews when he went back in Yerushalayim. In the days of Ezra and Chemia, the Eden were all in bubble. Then they, then they came back. Well, not everybody came back. In fact, most of the Levim didn't come back. Therefore, Ezra fined the Levim in the second base of English not to give them Meiser. Meiser that you want to give to the Levi? In the second base of English, they gave it to the Koyanim. Because Levi, huh? Cyrus, Yeah, yeah. Kulish. So who was it that had the Koyish wife? And he made him. Shlomo Melech. Shlomo Melech. No, he made him divorce when they came from Babylon. Oh, yeah, the Jews had Noshim Nochrius. 
in Ezra it says, Hasiru Anashim Nachri is get rid of the shikses. Yeah. A lot listened, a lot didn't listen. Yeah, he says that the, there was intermarriage, there was a terrible things going on. So the Gemara asks, what do you mean? Nehemia didn't get a book mentioned in his name because he says that Hashem remember, you know, for good, all the good that I did. So the Gemara said, David Amal said the same thing. So the Gemara said, David, Nami me Ma'amad, Zachreni Hashem, Bitsayna Mecha. Remember me, Hashem, when you favor your people. Pagdeni Bishur Secha, think of me at your salvation. So David Amalek said the same thing. And yet there is a book of Tilam and David Amalek. Why did Nehemiah not have a book? So the Gemara says David wasn't bragging. David Rachmo the Gaboy. David Amalek was asking for Rachmanis and Hashem. It's not a call for reward. See, Nehemiah said, Give me reward. That he was asking for personal gratification. Therefore, a tzaddik like that caliber shouldn't be asking for personal gratification, personal reward. And therefore, Hashem said, you're not having the permanent he didn't eternal... Take salary. Huh? Who? Um, um, what do you say that? Which number? What you were reading just now about Oh yeah, he didn't take a salary from his heavily burdened fellow Jews. Yeah, when the Eden came back, the Rambam says this, by the way, also. When the Eden came back for the second base of Migdash, they were so poor, they made the menorah out of tin. And then when they got more money, they started making it out of gold again. But they were very poor. So Nehemiah refers to take refused to take a salary. So he says to Hashem, look how great I am. I didn't take a salary. Reward me. So therefore, he was punished. David Amalek didn't ask for reward. David Amalek said, have Rachmanus on me. Okay. Then the Gemara says, another reason why Nehemiah was punished. Now the Gemara is discussing, why didn't Nehemiah have a book mentioned after him? He spoke bad about the earlier governors that uh, preceded him. Shanama, because it says in the Pasik, this is what Nechemia said. The, the earlier governors, which were before me, they burdened the people, and they took from them taxes in bread and wine. After taking 40 shekels uh, silver. Yeah? So the Gemara says like this. Rav Yasef says, why was he punished? Because he burdened, he burdened the people in his days from taxing. They were, no, they were broke. So Nechem Yitake said, I'm not even taking a salary from them. And he, he said, hey, I want uh, he burned them. So therefore he said, I'm greater than them. So the Gemara says, Even Daniel, who is greater than the Chemya, also he spoke bad. Why? No, so right away the Gemara interjects, How do we know Daniel was greater than the Chemya? What do we see in the Pasik? <coughs> Daniel was the greatest. It says, the Pasik says like this, I, Daniel, alone saw the vision. Daniel speaking. I, Daniel, saw the vision. They didn't see the vision. A great fear fell upon them. They ran away to hide. In other words, there was a vision of godliness. Daniel said, I saw it. The people with me didn't. But they, they, got, fe they got awed from it and feared from it. So they ran away and they hid. Sigmar says, Man niu anashim. Who are the people? Sigmar says, Chagiz chari malachi. Okay? Chanani malachi. Huh? Huh? No, where? 
I said, they didn't see the vision, they only ran away. Oh. One minute. And then this, but the person with the, the, the my new one, the or the people. So it says, I'm in a Yemi, we say, my Abkhini about Abba, the Chag is Chari Malachi. The three is Chag is Chala Malachi. So now the Gemara says, Dara Chag. So in Wadi Femine, in one way, Chag is Chari Malachi were greater than the Neil, and in one way, in Wadi Femine, they were greater than, he was greater than them. Okay? It's interesting because the Chari is speaking about Nehemia. And here he spoke Chag Yitzchari Malachi, whatever. So he says like this: In Wadi Feminei, they were superior to him. The In, I, you know, I made a mistake before. The In and the Via Chag Yitzchari Malachi were Neviim, and Donia wasn't. Okay, Donia wasn't the Navi, and the Chag Yitzchari Malachi were. The E Wadi Feminei, but the Neil is greater than them. The E Chaz because they saw the E and the In and the they didn't see the vision. So now the Gemara asks, the if they didn't see the vision, my tiny boys, why were they scared? What does the Basik say? Daniel says, I saw the vision. The people with me didn't, but they got scared. Chag is This is the same Zachariah whose blood was. Uh... Yeah, yeah, Chag is Chaim Malachi. No, it wasn't. It wasn't a No. So Rashi explains how does, but we're talking about Nehemia. So it says, Nehemia wasn't a Navi. That's a given. Nehemia wasn't a Navi. Chag Yitzchari Malachi were, were, were Neviim. So obviously, Neviim are greater than non Neviim. So therefore, Chag Yitzchari Malachi were greater than Nehemia. This is what Rashi explains. Greater than Nehemia. Now, then the, the Pasik says Daniel was greater than them. So if Daniel was greater than them in one respect, then for sure he's greater than Nehemiah. And nevertheless, Nehemiah spoke negative about Daniel. That's what the Rav Yasef was saying, right? Why was he punished? So the Gemara now asks a very simple question. If they didn't see the vision, why did they get scared? Yeah. So the Gemara answers in this uh, okay, the Gemara answered this chassidus brings down a lot. The Gemara says, "Afa gab the inu lechaze." Even they they didn't see anything. Mazlai lechaze, the mazel did see it. Meaning, each person has a malach, like the mazel of every person. What is a mazel? It's an angel, a malach, that's in charge of it. You have a malach, you have a malach, you have a malach. Everybody has a malach. That's their mazel. So why did they get scared? Even though they physically didn't see it, their malach, their mazel saw it. Amar Avinas and Avinas says, "Mam, now from here we learn that the high man the mivis. If a person is scared, I forgot why do you get out of the clear blue? Why do you get scared? Okay, what's making you get scared? He says you should know because mazlayo chaz it, your mazel saw it." Was Daniel a Navi? No. Okay, Zachary and Melachim were a Navi. Therefore, in one respect, they were greater than the Neil because they were in the VM, he wasn't. Right. But in the opposite side, the vision he saw, they didn't see. So what was the mile of the uh, uh, Daniel? And nevertheless, the Neil was greater than them. Even though he was a sad, well, yeah, not the Navi. Correct. He's not miracle, does he? Huh? Yeah. You don't mean there's be a Navi to do miracles. So a could be higher than a Navi. A Navi. The Gemara says a Chacham is better, greater than a Navi. Yeah, yeah. By the way, there's a lot of different levels of Navu. I mean, you have the Meishe Rabbeinos and you have the Shaya. Different levels of Navu also. Somebody who's at the level of being a Navi. Huh? Somebody who's a Navi is. Always Navi is a Navi. Okay, let's just finish this Gemara and then because the next starts the whole thing. Maita Kante, 
So the Gemara said like this: Yeah, get all of a sudden get a fear. What's the, what's the eitzah? How do you undo the fear? He says, Linchif miduchti abegamid. He should jump four amis from his place, right? Six feet. Why? Because what happened? What does it say? Bechagis chari malachi. They got feared and they ran away. So you see, when you run away, you get rid of the fear. Okay, why? It's jumping for Amis is you're basically leaving your original place. Okay, where the source of fear was. It means like this, by the way. For a person, when they walk, you know, there's a din in Bab Mitzia. Or Shabbos, you can't carry four Amis. Besides carrying from private to public, public to private, there's a biblical law. You're not allowed to carry four Amis in Rosh Hashanah. Yeah, the Gemara asks, where do we learn it out from? The Gemara in Shabbos, where do we learn it out from? So the Gemara says, Allah Chomeshim Messina. That's it. Carrying from private to public, public to private, it says clearly in Chomesh. Meshir Rabbeinu said, don't bring any more things for the Mishkan. They were carrying from their tents to the Mishkan, which was the public domain. So there we clearly see you can't carry from private domain to public domain. And then the Gemara says, so therefore, public to private, same logic. If you can't carry A to B, you can't carry B to A. Either. Okay. But then the Gemara says that carrying four Amis in the street is Allah HaMashim It doesn't say anywhere it's. But the Rishayim write, one of the reasons, it makes sense though. Why? The Gemara says like this, an average person is three Amis tall. If you stick out your hands, up, you're four Amis. Meaning like this, if a person would lay down in the street and extend his hands, he takes up four Amis. Is that four much Huh? Then, uh, Rashi, two four square Amis. No, not four square. Yeah, well, a halacha is four square. Therefore, it says like this. If I carry more than four Amis, I'm basically carrying from my private domain to my public domain. <laughs> So that's the it's logic. A length. It's a length. It's a length. It's a length. Okay. But therefore, the Gemara says, Arba Amish Shaladim Kainisli. Not in the public domain, though. The Gemara says, in the symptom means an off side street. For Amish, a person acquires any object that's in their four Amish. Why? Because that's their domain. So he says like this if you jump, <laughs> if you get feared, and you jump for Amish, you left your place. So it's not the same uh, source of fear anymore. Huh? Jump up or jump? No, jump. Therefore, the Gemara says the same thing. You know, God forbid if there's uh, dogs do or whatever in the street, you can't dabble within four Amis. You're not allowed to do mitzvahs within four Amis of a grave. Why? Because four Amis is, is that space. domain. That's the space. That's this, their there's space. space. So therefore, it's a din of a grave. It has a din of the, the, the dogs do and you can't uh, dabble in there. So four Amis is in, in Aloha is this really, really important four Amis. So it's four Amis squared. Yeah, two. not four squared Amis. Four Amis in any direction. Any direction. Correct. Because you can lay down in any direction. So it could be one Amma by four Amma or two Amma by two Amma. No, 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 no. It's four Amis in the length, but the Chum said four Amis squared. That means if, okay, if this is four Amis, right? Right, it's a two by two Amis. No, no. If I stand here, I got four Amis, four Amis, four Amis, four Amis. 16 square Amis. Yeah, but it's not called four squared. It's not, it's it's supposed not to square.